Hello everybody, my name is Raxif and it has been far too long since I've done one of these videos. Today I wanted to discuss the supposed leak that happened a few days ago in terms of the ending of Battle for Azeroth and the leading into the next expansion. Obviously this is just a supposed leak, nothing official has been confirmed at all. I'm also not going to be really talking about what's in the leak itself. I'm not going to spend time doing that. There are plenty of other sources, other videos uh, that you could watch that will fill you in on what exactly this leak is if you don't know about it or haven't heard about it by now. I'm also going to link down below to the source of the leak. So check that out. Feel free to pause the video if you're confused as to what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, but today, I'm just going to dive into a couple of the points in the leak and uh, and just approach them from more of a feasibility and how interesting or cool it would be to have these particular plot points in the game so uh, let's just jump into it the first portion of the leak has to do with a map i don't really want to spend a lot of time on this at all maps i feel like are possibly always changing in the development process in terms of names and what exactly is going on with them there's not really anything particularly relevant to me about this map the only relevant item is that the shadowlands are there i think everyone pretty much knows that the shadowlands and that nihilotha are probably going to be playing stronger parts in world of warcraft as a whole as we move forward we've been dealing a lot with uh with death and people Kind of fudging fudging the lines or or playing with souls with the whole uh with the whole story between Bonsamdi and Vol'jin and that still isn't really uh solved so that's where the Shadowlands come in obviously Nihilotha with the unleashing of unleashing of Nizoth that's going to be playing a bigger part I don't feel like speculating too much on what exactly that's going to look like from a map perspective. I, I just, I feel like most players who are engaged with the lore at this point are assuming that the Shadowlands and Nihilotha are going to be playing uh, larger parts in the World of Warcraft story, if not in the immediate future, then very, very soon. What I did want to focus on is what it talks about in patch 8.3. Now, in 8.2, we've obviously left off with having defeated Ajara, who has been uh, resurrected by the newly released Nizoth. I don't think that Ajara and or Nizoth will be the final boss of Battle for Azeroth. I don't, I don't see that being sort of a, a satisfying way to end things, uh, which, is, which is an interesting story, an interesting way to take the story because there hasn't really been a an old god that has transcended uh, multiple expansions obviously we have uh, Cthune who was dealt with in vanilla we have yogg saron whose influence was all throughout wrath of the lich king and uh, and then of course we faced uh, yogg saron at the end of wrath of the lich king with nizoth he's coming in you know two-thirds of the way into battle for azeroth and i would really really like him to play a prominent role in the next uh, in the next expansion just let him be around more let his influence be felt a bit more uh, personally just because i really really like the old gods i i like their aesthetic i like the the design uh the design choices that they that they make uh and, and how how they can twist the world and and put a put a spin on sort of everything so i'm really really hoping that at least nazoth lasts uh beyond this expansion and i'm pretty sure that it will like i said it, it would i think it would feel bad for uh for nazoth specifically to be just to be released this patch only to be put down at the end of battle for azeroth it it, it, it just would kind of leave a sour taste in my mouth but that being said the whole 8.3 battle in Stormwind Raid that is being talked about here. I don't know how much I like it, particularly with with Sylvanas's motivations for encouraging it, because 
as we know, we talk about the burning of Thunderbluff after having rescued Bane uh, with the help of Jaina and Thrall. And there's kind of that foreshadowing that Sylvanas might go this route. I, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't want her to, uh, to go in this particular direction. I think it's still just pushing her a bit further than, than he even is now. And, and, and her direction now, I, I personally don't really, I'm not the biggest fan of the direction that she's going. There's, there's, and there's a couple of like still loose strings that I don't, I don't feel like she's going to be doing this, like this double triple agent thing that you think she's the bad guy but she's really the good guy but then you think she's the bad guy for wanting to attack Stormwind, but now she's actually the good guy because she's preparing us there there is definitely something still going on mainly because when we first get to najatar as the horde we know that nathano still has the zalatath blade that hasn't played any kind of role since we've been in najatar so something is still going on and there is some sort of secret that's being kept from us but i would i would hate to see it culminate in us storming the gates of stormwind i not that it would not be an interesting raid and ever since siege of orgrimmar and missa pandaria i've always wanted to see what that would be like if we sort of turned the tables and we stormed stormwind uh i just don't i don't, I don't like how that would lead to us uh, us eventually all all dying and and just i said i wasn't really going to talk about what's in the leaks itself but i do need to give it some context so the whole idea is that is that we think that she's going to attack thunder bluff we think sylvanas is going to attack thunder bluff and actually she's targeting Stormwind, and this has all been a whole misdirection and we've played into her hands so now we're now we're going into Stormwind, and the horde and the alliance are united in order to take back Stormwind, and as we fight our way through, there's influences from old gods, and we need to fight off some, uh, fight off some other NPCs which are of note within Stormwind, and then it culminates into the the peace that has been brokered between the Horde and the Alliance. Now, all of a sudden, being severed by a turn of events, and the final boss is the Horde versus the Alliance, and in the end, we all just end up dying, and. It's it is an extreme it is an extreme direction and I would agree with something that Beliar said in that it is it is the slap in the face that I think a lot of players need from Blizzard but it just doesn't feel it, it to me it wouldn't be fulfilling to have to have this be the slap in the face obviously something really really big is coming I just can't see it being us all actually dying and then being transported to the shadow realms where Sylvana says aha i i was the smartest one all along and this was all a big ploy to make sure that you were strong enough to go to nylotha and defeat nazoth like i there's too much like inception type things going on here it 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 i like it because it's the slap in the faith face i don't like it because it's it's just like a little bit too out there and i i wouldn't i just wouldn't feel like bfa came full circle with that being the the conclusion once again something big probably is going to happen there's still there's still aspects in play that we don't know of but i i i don't think it would be the best move to culminate BFA in this storming of Stormwind as interesting as kind of interesting as that would be. The other part of this 8.3 coin that makes me doubt its validity and its feasibility is the fact that when I say everyone is dying in the final boss fight, everyone is dying. We have Anduin dying, we have Lorthamar dying, we have Bolvar or Dragon coming out of nowhere as the Lich King and siding with the Alliance and then Sylvanas shooting Gen and, and I'm assuming that Gen dies. There's there's just a lot of different aspects in play that like all come together at the very last moment. It feels like Avengers Endgame where everyone's on screen and in the last few minutes and, and this is like the culmination of everything. And, and as much as I would like to see a 
reintroduction with with Bolvar for Dragon, particularly since we do interact with his daughter in Basel, Battle for Azeroth. I don't think that that an 8.3 raid is is the way to do it, particularly in this manner. I do think that for Dragon will have some sort of role to play in the future, like uh, many characters that are uh, that we've been introduced to or sort of getting reacquainted with by various means. I just don't see it being at some super friends get together. We're all going to defeat the final boss together, but then we end up turning on each other and we all just die. It, 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 it just, it feels very, it feels, it feels like a, like a weak way out. Like it, it feel, it feels like a cop out. Like I, I, I can't see that being, it's, it's almost too far fetched. And, and granted there have been events that have happened this uh this expansion that that if someone told me it was going to happen i would have said no way that's too far-fetched so obviously it's always a possibility but i can't see i can't see bolvar for dragon even though we we went back and talked with him about the whole bulgen thing and even though we've seen his daughter in in uh on the alliance side i just don't see him all of a sudden appearing in Stormwind and siding with the Alliance. Uh, once again, I'd love to see him in the future, just not right now. So th those are kind of the main things that make me doubt the the 8.3 raid and why I, why I kind of wouldn't want to see things go this way. I would love to see the Alliance and the Horde teaming up in some sort of raid. I, I think that... What is most likely is that it is some sort of culmination that has to do with Sylvanas, but I would hope that it leads to us not all just dying and then that playing exactly into Sylvanas' plans. I've, I'm getting kind of tired of, oh, Sylvanas was the hero all along and she knows absolutely what's right and she's going to play us all because she's the smartest one in the room. I, I get that from a certain perspective, but at, at some point, I think it just it does go a bit too far. It feels like Sylvanas is almost the new thrall in that Sylvanas knew everything and, and Sylvanas is, is, is like the greatest character and we just don't see it. But it's like the other, it's like the other side of thrall. It's like, Oh, instead of thrall being green Jesus as everyone knows him and he's going to save the day. Sylvanas we think is anti green Jesus, but really she's just purple ish gray Jesus. Yeah, I, I I want to see us all coming together, and I want to see something happen with the joining of the factions. I just don't want to see what this leak is saying comes afterward. And of course, there was this little blurb about Gallywix and Mechatork uh, working together or uh, forming an alliance in order to construct the device that will let us enter the Shadowlands, and then that becomes the introduction to the Tinker class. I think uh, I think that this is actually something that is more and more likely, particularly with the end of uh, with the end of Mechagon, when we see the the gnome or the like the gnomes and the goblins talking about that. Hey, you know, working together, it actually was kind of profitable, and this was this was actually a good idea. I'm pretty surprised at this. That goes to show me that maybe. Gallywix can change and form some sort of alliance with Mechatoric. I think out of all of the Horde characters, Gallywix is probably the least likely to change, which is which is kind of what I like about him. He's you, like you very much know what Gallywix is about, and that's he he's that's why he's one of my favorite racial leaders in the Horde. But it does kind of foreshadow with the ending of Mechagon that there is possibly something brewing between the gnomes and the goblins, and as much as it's not that I don't want the Tinker class. I would just much rather have the Bard class. Uh, but there is, I'm, I have to admit, there has been more and more support for the Tinker class. Even though I want Bards, I'm a Bard boy till the end. It would be a cool introduction that, hey, Tinkers are now coming about because the Goblins and the Gnomes, they've put aside most of their differences at least, and they're combining their knowledge, and they're able to they're able to create this, this kind of one, this perfect engineer and then and then you know teach that across both the horde and the alliance and then that's how the tinker class comes about i think that that uh sounds 
fairly likely. I'm not saying that that's exactly what happens, but some somewhere along the lines where where the goblins and the gnomes are working along. I think that that would that would be pretty cool, and and it would be a a neat change of pace to what we've been seeing throughout the whole expansion with Gallywix always yelling and cursing at uh, at Mechatork and then just kind of playing cat and mouse against each other. It'd be it'd be interesting to see the two work together. That's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on what you think about this leak. If you agree with anything I said, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. Obviously, as we get closer and closer to BlizzCon, I'm expecting more and more possible leaks or drops of information uh, within the uh, within the WoW news sphere. Obviously, we just had the key art from BlizzCon get dropped and that has Sylvanas in it. So I'm thinking that Sylvanas has some sort of big part to play, obviously, as we move ahead, as as it's kind of been an indicator. The key art is, has usually been an indicator of kind of what's going on uh, in the very, very near future. So I'm looking forward to that. BlizzCon's only two months away. But, and uh, and yeah, let me know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you like this video, then of course, give it a like. If you didn't, then you know what to do. And if you like this video a lot and you want to support my channel, then of course, feel free to subscribe. That being said, I will see you again next time.